I, they, yes, they send me, well, there are a lot of story between, but we, we don't have time for. Yes, <laughs> we need to move on. I'm sorry. I, I wish I had two, two, two or three days two, to three be days. talking. <laughs> and then, yes, uh, I was sent to, to the World College in the, in the, in the Soviet Union. And uh, I, <clears throat> it, it was a, a good college. And, and the thing is that, the, you know, the pilot, I mean, I don't mean the, the big uh, uh, commander in there in, in Russia, but the, the pilot that were uh, with us in, uh, <coughs> uh, in the course, they had the same complaint that, 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 I, that we had. You know, pilots are a brotherhood, and, and they, they were complaining the, the, <clears throat> the unflexibility of the, of, of the, uh, the, the Soviet doctrine, uh, uh, why they have to, to force the pilot to only uh, follow the instruction of the ground controller and, and, don't, have, and don't have initiative. And and uh, oh, oh, many other things, and that was difficult for them, and I never un uh, understood that. And but the course was help us to understand another things that were important, like uh, how organized operations, uh, air operations, and 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 that was very good for us in one sense and bad in another sense. Because <clears throat> as they send the, the middle level commander to the war college and the high level never, uh, they didn't go to the co uh, war college until late 75, 1975. The problem is when we return, they, uh, the, our commander didn't, didn't understand what, what we mean, what, what the plan that, that we make, and, and that in them, in, for instance, when, when I went to Angola as the, the commander uh, of the expeditionary force, the, the, the Air Force, I tried to explain many times to the, the commander of the Cuban force what, <clears throat> what I was planning to do, and he didn't understand. That, that, that was very difficult. So it creates problem, and it is very difficult to, to conduct operation, and uh, your, your your commander don't don't understand, doesn't understand uh, what is going on, and 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 then that create me uh, a crossroad. I, I had a, the the South African uh, that, that was the the enemy, and the the commander was also the because they were interrupting everything. Okay. For instance, I, I, I'm going to give you one example. Um, in, the, in the deal with the Soviet, it was uh, they, they were going to um, uh, supply the, the airplane. They gave me one squadron of Mi-21, one of uh, Mi-17, uh, two of squadron of helicopter, uh, <clears throat> and one, uh, one, uh, one day the the the. Um, the general uh, in charge of the transportation in, in the staff came to pick up all, all the truck. You know, in the in the Soviet structure, each airplane has a truck for the the shock with the the, the the cover of the airplane and, and to move the airplane inside the the base. He came and said, "No, I." I came to pick up all the, uh, the truck because we need those trucks for the front, for the troop. I say, and hey, hey wait, wait a minute, and, and what about the airplane? He said, no, no, what you have is airplane. You don't have truck. You don't need truck. Are you? <laughs> I went to see the the commander. Say, hey, listen, you you are uh, taking me out of uh, my my truck. How are you going to do? Oh, I, I don't know. You, that's, that's your problem. Do you imagine that a, a, a commander tell you that? I say, okay, okay. I'm going to resolve the problem. So I, I call my, the, my commander of logistics. I say, right now, 
you know, there is a social uh, the disorganization here. Now you go to the port. The first Soviet ship that arrived there, you got how many airplanes we have? 24. You got 24 trucks. <laughs> uh, when the Angolan guy give you the lead, you sign it. You put a one Paris, and you, and you bring me all those trucks. So, but then we didn't have uh, a driver. So I, I got the the chauffeur from uh, from the artillery. And, uh, and I, I, I gave it to him, he went there, I, he brought all, and then I had to be hiding the, the truck, so they don't know that, that I had a, those trucks. Oh, it was a lot of problem with, with that. Okay, sir. <clears throat> Obviously, you have a lot of experience, you know, you serve in Vietnam, also you were commandant of the Cuban Air Forces in Angola. But since we are uh, running out of time, I would like uh, for you to, to explain, uh, in 1987 you made your toughest decision probably in your life. You decided to defect to the United States. Yeah. Can you please share that uh, with us, that experience, and how did you plan that escape flight? Yes, I, I already was so upset, uh, disenchanted, and I couldn't take it anymore. And I started planning the uh, how to break away from Castro. So I had a, a sense down 402 uh, that I used to move between bases because I was, uh, after I returned from Angola, I was appointed uh, Inspector General of the, of the Air Force. So I have to be moving all the time. And <clears throat> I, I, it, not even my wife knew anything because I didn't want to make her nervous and, and it was very dangerous and I said, well, I, I, I have to, to do it. So <clears throat> first, my oldest son, he was a pilot of MiG-23. I, I told him, listen, I, I met him on, in the street because we were always afraid of the microphone of, of the, the country intelligence, and um, so I met him on the street and said, listen, this is what I'm going to do. Are you in? Say, yes, I am in. And, you know, I knew he also was disenchanted with everything. But, you know, the, the, the deceiving is so uh, <clears throat> in the Cuban society that even the, the, the son, the, they don't trust uh, their the father, and that, that mis, uh, mistrust is, is, is awful. But then, when he saw whatever, how I was thinking, he said, yes, I am in. So, <clears throat> uh, then I, I went to see my other son here, apart. Yeah, he was a pilot of, uh, also, and I told him the same thing. He asked me, uh, is my brother in? Yes, say, well, daddy, uh, listen, my mother is going to stay here alone. And if I go to, she, uh, she will stay, uh, she won't, uh, it, it will be very difficult for her. And uh, uh, I will stay. So I told him everything that was going to happen. And, uh, and <clears throat> after I left, he, he suffered the consequences. And, well. Thank God that, she, that he is here. But <clears throat> then I have everything planned. And uh, the, the, I, have, I, I made a first intent. I take my, my wife, my, my little girl. Uh, I has, she was two years old, my, my older brother. And a, another mm, son with the second marriage that I had. He, <coughs> we, we entered the, the headquarters. We have a, a runway there. I have, we have my, my aircraft there. And I already have uh, the, all the frequencies of the ground control and everything. And we went to the airplane. We start engine. I have, I feel the uh, the flight plan to go to the south in, a, 
the resort that we had for the generals in, in the South. And everything was okay. I, uh, mm, Tried to, I tried to start the, the engine. I, I started the left engine. When I was going to start the right engine, it, it, didn't, it didn't work. It didn't start. Oh, I had to put them again, all, all of them in, in the car. And I called the, the technician and said, listen, I need you to repair that. that I think something is wrong with the injection system. I need you to repair that because I need it as soon as possible. Maybe tomorrow in the morning, at last. <clears throat> So I went back to my home. I, I left <laughs> my older son in his house, the other in the in other. And <clears throat> I, I got home and I received a, a, a first call from the technician. I say, the, the airplane is, uh, is ready. It's ready. OK, tomorrow I will be there. Then <clears throat> I was doing something. Oh, yeah, I, I received from my wife answered another call, and it, it, it was from the uh, Raul Castro office. I said, oh my God, what I have done wrong, I tried to see, it's impossible because not even my wife knows what I'm gonna do. So <clears throat> they, uh, they, they I, 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 she handed me the phone, and it was the, the general, the assistant of Raul Castro say, General, uh, 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 the, the minister wants you to, to be here tomorrow at nine. Okay, I I went there and, uh, the next day, and uh, I say, well, whatever it is, I I take. It. And then uh, about nine fifteen, he he came out the the assistant. I said, General, come on, I. I have something for you. So he <clears throat> said the, the minister had to, to leave. He won't be here, but he, he gave me this, the task to give you the key of your new home. So, oh, new home, yeah. Uh, okay, then the, he, he asked me, when, uh, when are you going to move? I say, maybe, because I was, <laughs> I was relieved. Maybe in, in two hours. In two hours, okay. <laughs> then, then he laughed and said, you always are joking. Stop joking. This is serious. And I, 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 say, I am serious too. It's serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see you later. No. He called in the interphone to the, the chief of logistics and said, okay, you, you have prepared a, a truck. And General Del Pino is going to call you. He said that he, he said that, that he's going to move today, but I know, no. I said, I am going to move. <laughs> You're going to move today, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fortunately, everything worked fine, and you are here with us to share the experience. So, sorry, sorry, we don't have more time, but I really appreciate you sharing all these stories. I think we as a class, We've learned a lot from you and uh, definitely inspire us to be better uh, officers in the future. So I want to thank you again, sir, for being here with us. And uh, uh -huh. I would like the recognition for General Del Pino from everybody. <laughs> thank you.